Today we're going to learn the classic Piedmont Blues standard, Step It Up and Go. Step It Up and Go has been around for many, many years. It's been titled a variety of things. It's been Shake It Up and Go. It's been Bottle Up and Go. Everybody's put their own spin on it. The most famous version is by Blind Boy Fuller. It was recorded in 1940. So today I'm going to teach you my version of Step It Up and Go. I see a woman all dressed in red I know that girl, she shoot you dead She's gotta step it up and go Yeah, go Do what she wants The girl's gotta step up and go I see a woman all dressed in blue I know that girl, she's in love with you She's gotta step it up and go Yeah, go Do what she want The girl gotta step up and go Gotta step it up and go Step it up and go Yeah, step it up and go Yeah, go Do what she wants Girls gotta step up and go We're teaching Step It Up and Go today. It's a great example of a 12-bar blues in the key of G, which means we're using G or G7, C, and D7. Starts out on your G chord, change to G7, C, back to G, D7, C7, and then a little turnaround. First, we're going to take a look at the right hand picking technique. The right hand in this song is doing a bouncing alternating thumb, mainly alternating between, if I'm on the G chord, the G note and the open D. So when I do the G chord, it sounds like this. Now when I change to G7, the, the fingering doesn't change at all. When I move it over to the C chord, the thumb starts to go C, E, low G, E. So it's a double alternation and you get this sound. That's what I prefer, the double alternation. When I move up to the D7 chord, same fingers as for the C chord. And then we'll treat the little turnaround this separately in its own section. So we're looking now at the left hand and the chords, uh, the chord voicings for this tune. There are two sections. The first where I'm playing just chords and most of the melody is coming from the way that the finger style is working with it. The second section will be a walking bass line that more or less arpeggiates the chords. Okay, so this first section, I'm playing a G chord. I prefer to use the middle finger, ring finger, and pinky because the index finger being free allows me to change to G7 very simply. This fingering also allows me to change to the next chord, which is C, but I keep this pinky finger down on the high G note. It, it, so it, it sounds like a little drone is gonna be continuing through this section. Here's the alternating thumb. You can see that when I'm alternating, it's going from this bass note, C, to the E, and then the double alternation, it goes from the low G back to the E. So it's like this. After that, I'm back to G. Then I'm going to D7. This D7 is shaped like a C7 chord. Here's C with a pinky on the G string, third fret. It's a C7. For the D7 chord, I've got this C chord shape. When you add a pinky, you get a C7. 
by adding a pinky to the third fret of the G string. So I'm going to take that shape up two frets. This D7 is shaped like a C7 chord. Here's C with a pinky on the G string, third fret, it's a C7. I move that up two frets, I've got a D7. So I'm going like this. I'm not on the chord that long, but it's about this long. So it's a measure of D7, a measure of C7. And then we do this really cool turnaround riff. So the turnaround goes G, a high G, and then I start walking down a chromatic line from the D string, third fret, it's an F note. E, index finger, E flat, and then I finish the phrase with a G again. So here it is in fast motion. number of different rhythms that people can apply to that but the main thing is to try to get your pinky planted on that high G so that you're able to bring the ring finger over the middle finger the index finger and then back to the G and here it is in fast motion sounds like this and that's your whole first section so I'll put it together for you G G7, C with the pinky, double alternating, back to G, D7, C7, turn around. And that's the whole first section. So the second section revolves around a walking bass line, just walking in quarter notes and we're, they more or less arpeggiate the chords themselves. I try to keep this pinky down for both the G and the C chords so that I have a high treble note that can bounce off of each bass line. So the notes for the G chord, I'm playing a low G, the, the B that's already in the chord, the open D that's already in the chord. My fourth note is this E that's at the second fret of the D string. So it sounds like this. Now, when I bounce the high G note, which I'm holding with my pinky, in between every note, I get a kind of a syncopated eighth note feel like this. And then if I have a two measure phrase, I can go up to the highest G, high G being the middle G, open, and then come back down right through the same notes. So I go up, down. This time I'm gonna to go to G7. So I go, instead of the G, I add the ring finger, I get an F note. And I come back down. So it's G, G7. Now I'm onto the C chord. Very easy to arpeggiate this. C bass note, E note, second fret of the D string, open G string. Then I take that middle finger and I pick up the A note that's on the second fret of the G string. So it sounds like this. Add my pinky note for a little bit of syncopation. I got two measures on that, so I just did the same phrase twice. And then I'm back to the G for two measures. And then for the D7, I really don't uh, do a walking bass line off that. Uh, I could do it if I want, but what I usually do is just go straight to a D7 shape and I do a syncopated one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, and then I'm back to my walk down. So here's the overview, the whole thing. G, up, down, G7 this time, up, down, C, G, back down, D7, C7, walk down. And that's pretty much it. 
I hope you enjoyed my version of Step It Up and Go. I sure do appreciate all the blues players who came before and passed down this great music to us.